I agree with you that science doesn't give you absolute knowledge. Right? There's no unbreakable truth that can never be revised. So, but I think that's just true of all yeah. knowledge. It's a great tool, necessary. Helps us progress yeah, in the world. Yeah. I mean, you can't deny the progress yeah. that we because of this. Right. And actually, we're encouraged to look at even the Quran encourages us to sort of look into the universe and find these things. A couple of thought experiments. If you had a system in which there was no, 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 nothing happened that we would call bad now, so no killing, no murder, no rape, etc., yeah. etc., et you couldn't even think a bad thought. As soon as the thought came, it would turn into sort of pink puffs that would fly away. If you were to stab somebody, it would turn into a rubber knife. Yeah, yeah. If you tried to jump off a building, you'd start flying, you know. In that system, yeah. is, it, is there any morality? And um, they've got these hilarious songs. Uh, so I love them about medicine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many anecdotes because you just come across people who are yeah. just completely disabled in terms of making a decision about their health. Wow. It's hilarious. I've had, I've had somebody come to me, you won't believe, you know, Charles Fulmover. Can we just send a bit to my yeah, bag? Yeah, yeah. Uh, You're worried about your bag, yeah? Yeah, 90% people like So we had a. Yeah, go on. Charles Fulmover had a lip, lip swollen. They're coming because they're worried about the swollen lip. They're worried about what, sorry? Because the lips are Okay, yeah. It's just the normal. Right. That's what happens, you know. You bang your lip, it's all good. Right. But people are just so worried that they can't just make a. The worried well, they call it, don't they? Yeah. So their, their nan would have told them. Right. Don't worry about it. They don't have access to nan anymore, so uh, right. they Google it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and probably they find something crazy. Everything's death, isn't it, on Google? Yeah. Death or cancer. There's no, no nothing intermediate. <laughs> Uh, well, it's like the Daily Mail, is it? Every substance either causes or cures, uh, or sometimes both, <laughs> cancer. Yeah. So it's really, I think I spend probably about maybe 30 to 40 pounds of my time pastoral work. Right, right, right. right. Just calming people down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then at the end of our time, it's either, you know, just saying, okay, this will go away in a bit, don't worry about it. Right. Or treating people. So. Right. <laughs> If you just leave people, most things, most things are yeah. okay. Yeah. But we're in a world of information without filters. Yeah. Yeah. And if yeah. you, you know, even though if I went into a you know, physics book, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Started reading, you know, I could easily get the wrong end of the stick. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. and convincing, I could And there's lots yeah, of yeah, wrong yeah. stuff out there. Stuff even even really from like good really sources. Really. Yeah. 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 I haven't I haven't been jumping for a while, but hopefully I'm gonna do something uh, beginning of next year. So when I was in my twenties and thirties it was my whole life. Like I did like nothing else. Every weekend, jump 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 jump. Every holiday, go to a foreign drop zone, jump 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 jump. I did thirteen hundred jumps. Uh competed. And and then, you know, after I got married I kind of got a bit bored of it, actually. Okay. And, lost, and then I lost a very close friend. So I kind of stopped jumping a lot. But I have been back since. It's not like a complete curtailment. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, occasional, yeah. we call it dip your knees in the breeze, we would say. Um, but what was cool this summer, um, I got um, made the journalist in residence for the. Um, Institute for Gravitation and the Cosmos at uh, Penn State University. So I was out there for a lot of the summer covering their conferences and they gave me an award for popularising fundamental physics. So uh, you sent me some links. I had a look at some lectures. I can't remember what I sent. I didn't even know I had your email actually. They sent me a link. It was a whole day's worth of talking and I couldn't watch it all because it's just... Yeah, so I can't remember what... what no, I, I, I actually forgot I even had your email. I think email. talking about... The, you know, the basis of science being matchless. Oh, okay. You sent me a, a conference or something. Oh, it was a conference. Yeah, yeah, Maybe, yeah. okay, yeah. And I'll, and yeah, because I, I think that's not entirely right. I mean, I know a lot of people think that. There, there are some people that say that. Like Carlo Ravelli, someone I expect very, I expect very highly. I agree with him on almost everything. And he thinks, basically, science is looking for natural explanations. That's what science is. So as long as you're doing that, you're doing science. Uh, That's why I but I, I not entirely agree with that. I, I think science is a more complicated beast, and it has it's multifaceted. So I agree. 
you, you uh, primarily look for a naturalist explanation, but I think if, if empirical evidence really showed you. So I think empiricism is probably the most important thing of science, not necessarily naturalism. But so if empirical that's evidence that's could show the supernatural, then I think we would have to agree with the supernatural. I think, yeah, quite yeah, okay. It's debatable whether it could. Yeah, yeah. The, the case that I gave when we last, I don't know when we last spoke, when sometime when we spoke, was there were studies of prayers. And I felt, this was the medical studies, you know, I think they had control groups, some some people were prayed for, some weren't, some people were prayed for and told about it, and some people were prayed for and not told about it. They had, like, it was, I thought it was a good study. Like, the, the, the design of the study looked pretty good to me. And, and so I felt that had it shown that prayer really worked. Well, if you had the people, um, well, in particular, well, this is what they didn't have in the study, but I think they sh- should have had. Imagine, and I think I said this last time, so apologies if I repeat myself. Imagine it was only the prayers of Catholics that worked, right? And no one else. Because you might say, okay, maybe it's a placebo effect, something like that. Some psychosomatic thing. Okay, yeah, fair enough. But if it was only the prayers of Catholics that work, and it only worked when they weren't told about it, because that wasn't the, the study that I read. There was a group that weren't told they were being prayed for. Because you could, because actually, the results of the study was the people that were told they were being prayed for did slightly worse. And I imagine that could be a psychosomatic thing, because maybe they thought, shit, they haven't got any, <laughs> any medicines for me. You know, it's last resort stuff. So maybe there was some sort of nocebo effect. That's conceivable, right? But if the people that weren't told did better, and only in one particular religion or one particular, you know, group, the is, then, then, then I think that would um, show something. Something is going on there. Do you know what I mean? I don't I think. think that, me, yeah. First, because almost obviously with any. I'm just going to move my back. No, you can leave it there. No worries. Oh no, no, I know. It's just yeah. okay. Just you know. Yeah, the, there's always, before any tests are done, there's always some free theory. Yeah. And then you do the test based upon your free theory. So you set up your experiment. Not always. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes uh, you're just in, uh, looking. Do you know what I mean? Like some, some when they develop pharmaceuticals, yeah. sometimes they just throw compounds together and see. You so know. it's very rarely blindly. No, no, I agree. It's rare, but it's not unheard of. So what they'll what they will do is they'll when it particularly pharmaceuticals, what they'll do is they'll there'll be some information that people have used as yeah. plant or something. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and so yeah. what they'll do is they'll take all the compounds out of that plant yeah. and test them individually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or they'll take a known compound and adjust yeah. the structure. Yeah, sure, sure. So it's never... Because they're going to spend millions on this. So no, but there play. are people that do blind searches on... Like, like, like for example, Craig Venter. Uh, they did, he did this whole expedition to just look for new compounds, just go into the deep sea, look for organisms, see what... Can we find some new proteins? Who knows what they do? You know, just find new proteins that, that and might have to use some this, function. Um, modeling, computer modeling for drugs that might work. Right. So you take a, a receptor and you see what could fit into that once yeah. you've you made an image of it. And that yeah. will give you an idea of yeah. if we made this compound that we yeah. don't have now, would that work? Yeah. But I think it's sort of what you're describing is quite a rare phenomenon. But I think what I was going to say is that, yeah. it, that even the pre theory for this idea yeah. that you can do a study on prayer. Yeah. So, for example, in Islam, we don't have this concept that God only answers the prayer of Muslims. It doesn't exist. That idea doesn't exist. No, no, but you yeah. might have to revise that if it were the case yeah. that you could show empirically that only the prayers of Muslims but work. Then, but then the thing is, you need to. Then, 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 then you might have to revise that thought. Hello. How you hey, Darren, how are you? How are you? The thing, um, the thing with that is that it's just. Um, it's not, it's going to t- all, you're going to, all you're going to see is something happened to these people and something didn't. But you're, you're, it's hard to But you wouldn't, you wouldn't start to wonder, hang on, we see only the prayers of uh, Muslims work, and only Sunni Muslims, right? And they consistently work. Wouldn't you start to go, hang on, something's going on here? No, what? There's what? so many. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Free theory and this is not right. Yeah. So first of all, we don't say only Muslim prayers are answered. No, I know you don't. I know so you don't. I'm not claiming that you do. Everything then falls down from that point. Because then you, what you're doing is you, there's the compounding factor comes in. You can't. That's a compounding factor that you can't um, uh, correct for. Because actually, even even, even Satan had his prayer answered. 
because of that stage. So it, it wouldn't give you any information that qualifies. So whether something is or not. But at least you could tell if prayers were answered. No, you couldn't. But you just said Satan's prayers were answered. Hey, how are you, sir? Because there are some answers that you can receive. Yeah, 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 sir. I can't forget you, Phil. You, know, you, have to, you have to think about my name. But for me, fly, you know, skydive Phil, that's just... Uh, it's set in stone. <laughs> set in stone. You're famous, so you know. Wow. Well, some some prayers are answered in a way that we don't even materially re recognise here. But you, so they're they're they answered. Sort of right. But you did say Satan's prayers were answered, right? Yeah, yeah. So there must be a way to know but that. It, but not for us. We, we're told it. But you so can't you're test told it. that. You can't test it. You can't test yeah. it. Okay. Okay. So there are some things that you can't, are not, right. just not testable. The other problem with the, the, saying that science is naturalism is defining what naturalism is. Because the, the problem is that um, what counts as natural and what doesn't, right? So you might say, well, if it's described by the laws of physics, then it's natural. I mean, that would be my temptation to say that, right? I, 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 that seems reasonable, right? But if we got some new observations, as we adver observed something that doesn't seem to conform to the laws of physics, um, we could say, okay, that's proof of the supernatural, or we could say, Maybe our laws of physics need revising, right? And it wouldn't be clear which is the answer, right? And therefore, the border, the boundary between what is natural and what isn't natural, to me, is not clear, right? Um, and also, let, let's take um, platonic forms. Now, you might say, are platonic forms naturalism? I mean, a lot of people say platonic forms are not naturalism, but they're not supernatural in the sense of, you know, like a divine being or, or something like that either. So again, I think the problem is the borderline between naturalism and what isn't naturalism um, it can, can be hard to delineate. It's a multiverse natural. Because some people say, all right, everything that obeys the laws of physics. But what if there's another universe that obeys different laws of physics? You, well, you wouldn't say it's supernatural. Maybe there's still no God, there's no ghosts or psychics or stuff like that. Um, but it, yeah, again, it's not quite the laws of physics. Uh, you know what I mean? So, so th that's another problem. So the thing is, the thing with these sort of ideas yeah. is I, I, appreciate, and I appreciate the need to try and define the basis of science as not purely naturalism. So I think that leads you to pick the on my views. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is, is that the way the, the science has worked is that you look for a natural explanation in every single case. I, I, I agree you do. Yeah. But, but um, so you would rather, yeah, yeah, I agree. You would I agree. rather revise the rules of physics than postulate uh, actually uh, this is a, a supernatural thing that we can't we can't assess really. Well, I, I, well, here's the thing. So if, if we were faced with that, yeah. right, then we what we would try and do is yeah, we might try and rewrite, but maybe but then they have to be tested, right? Yeah, yeah. So if they continually fail, then that option would look less and less sure, believable. Sure. So I think. Well, well, one, other, one, other, one other way to do science, I mean, I don't think science is just one thing. No, no. They're, they're sort of, it's sort of multidimensional. So, I, and I think there are many criteria for is, is it science? So I think we can imagine like one criteria being looking for a natural explanation, another being empiricism, another is using the null hypothesis, you know, and, and another is building on existing knowledge, you know, that we've checked through experiment. Um, another is, can you make something falsifiable? There, there's all these different criteria, and I don't think science is reducible to one of these criteria. Rather, I think the more you have these criteria, the more scientific you are. So I think in the case of like, when, we, when we say, does science exclude the supernatural? I mean, I think, um, let, let, let's take, I don't know if you read the, the novel Contact by Carl Sagan. All right, spoiler alert, any, I don't know if you're filming or not. If you are filming, jump over the next minute because a spoiler alert for the end of the book. Okay, so at the end of the book, so the book is about contact with aliens and okay. they send signals. Is that the movie um, with Jodie Foster? Yeah, but they had a really brilliant ending in the book. They had a brilliant ending in the book that um, it's not in the film. Uh, okay, here's the spoiler. Okay, here's the spoiler. So in the end of the book, the, he, she goes to meet the aliens. And then they're like, and she asked them about like their religious beliefs and like, do you have, what do you think about your origins? And they're like, we've got something that we don't understand. We think there are patterns in natural numbers, right? And um, now, and so she goes back to Earth and in the book and in the film, no one believes that she actually went. 
right? Because in the it, it, anyway, um, so she she says I can maybe I can prove it. I'm going to look for patterns in natural. She goes to the park <laughs> and and she computes pie. She gets all the computing resources of the city and just starts computing pie to like a zillion decimal places. And then she starts finding like binary code, right? Now I think suppose you did that and you found binary code and it spelled out the whole text of the Quran. I think that would be scientific evidence that the Quran is at least from a. Uh, if not from the God who is the creator of all things, it would certainly be some beyond human intelligence, all right? Something, and it's written into the fabric of natural numbers. That that would, I think, I think you could write that up as a scientific paper, all right? I, I, I think you could. Um, because another thing about, thing about science is that it's checkable. You, it's reproducible. So if that were to be the case, I mean, it's, it's, it's not the case. So I want to make it clear. This is just an idea that was in a book, a fictional book, right? But if if that were to happen, other people could reproduce that result. And I think that's another feature of science, reproducibility. The thing is, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But nothing, nothing in science brings you to truth. All you're doing is you're building a model of current understanding of how the universe works. And, all, and that's all you would do. You, and you revise your model depending on the observations that would change the... But do you think theory. it's true that bacteria causes disease? Yes. But didn't you just say that science can't bring but, you to truth? Isn't there but a truth, no, no, there isn't. Because we're talking about ultimate truth. And we're about this. So in, in say, say in about 15 or 20 years, yeah. we discover that actually bacteria are themselves, you know, they have a prion in them, for example. Yeah. That when it comes into contact with human cells, yeah. it causes some damage to those cells. And yeah. That's the mechanism of the infection. It's not the bacteria, but actually the prion. No, I, I, so I agree. So yeah. what, what we do is we build models according to what we understand. So yeah. at the moment, our model is yes, bacteria cause infection. Right. But our, any any future observation could change that model. So this is what I'm saying to you about. Oh, I agree, I agree, I agree. Sure. But that, isn't that true of all human knowledge? Sure. But I agree with you to a certain extent. Now, I mean, what isn't open to revision? All sure. human beings are fallible. So any knowledge we have of anything is open to revision, right? Sure. I mean, there are even mathematical proofs that decade later or so turned out to be flawed. And that's, we can't get better than a mathematical proof. So the, the idea then that you use something that is changeable as a criterion to judge other things by it yeah. is a flawed way. But what, so, we have no choice, sure. We do, we do. What's the choice? So science is one way of, so science just, just means knowledge, right? And well, that's the ancient Greek yeah, ancient definition of the world, but I think it means more than that now. And then we have the natural now. sciences, yeah, which right. are now yeah. which we call science yeah. Now. yeah. But actually there's other ways of arriving at knowledge. Yeah, go on. You can use a ration, you can use logic. You can yeah, I agree. That's completely. Fine. Without yeah. any, you know, without anything. But even then we have to have certain uh, fundamental assumptions. Axiomatic right, which could always be wrong, right? Sure. Any any logical deduction you make, all right, sure. from an axiom, that's right. you could always challenge sure. the axiom, right? But, but even, I mean, even... But you need the axioms to do anything. Right, yeah, exactly. You have to have a starting point. Like, for Absolutely. example, the world, you know, the universe is real. Yeah, 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 That's of course. You have to start with an axiom, yeah. Causality is an axiom. Yeah, and any deductive sure. system sure. of knowledge Absolutely. starts with axioms. Sure. And you could always challenge those axioms. So I would say that no... I agree with you that science doesn't give you absolute knowledge. Yeah. Right? There's no unbreakable truth that can never be revised. So, but I think that's tool. just true of all yeah. knowledge. It's a great tool, necessary helps us progress yeah, in the world. Yeah. I mean, you can't deny the progress yeah. that we because of this. Right. And actually, we're encouraged to look at, even the Quran encourages us to sort of look into the universe and find out these things, because right. they confirm for us the ultimate thing, which is all these comes from the creator. So we're well, encouraged to <laughs> but, th but this is the point. I mean, then, we're, then we come down to the question of, Postulating an atheistic universe and postulating a theistic universe, and what the difference? No, no, that's not the only two options. Of course, there's pantheism, there's um, polytheism, there's deism. I mean, it's not only atheism or theism. So right? there's 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 no god in any any way understandable, and then there's other systems which have some sort of divine being. So that's the general cutoff. Oh, okay, within, okay. Within those, yeah. within those, there enough. are. Fair enough. Okay, systems. fair enough. Yeah. So, so, I mean, one of the arguments that people bring is that, you know, what's it, Carl Sagan who said, you know, you, you, you just believe in one, you believe in one less God than I do, you know, in the sense that. Uh, right, you just believe all the other religions. But this is, yeah. but the, the, the problem with this concept is that actually, the, you know, you can have many theories about an observation. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't make the observation untrue. So the fact that there's so many different... Uh, it doesn't make the observation true, do you think? Untrue. Oh, okay. So you understand. 
So, yeah, okay, fair enough, yeah, yeah. So, just because there are lots of different ideas about what the creator is... Yeah. ...and these, uh, Yeah, yeah. ...you know, the ones you mentioned, it doesn't take away the concept that there's a creator. So no, those, I agree, I agree, I agree. So when we're... So I when, I'm, when I'm coming to uh, talk about a, a theistic universe... Yeah. ...there's many aspects of that that I think are coherent, that make sense, that wouldn't make sense when I'm talking about an atheistic universe. Okay. And we've spoken okay. about these before many yeah. times, so, you know... Going over old material, but you know, <laughs> it's okay. One of the one of the things I know. But I want to pick up. I know we will only have so much time. I want to carry on our conversation about the seven heavens at some point. Oh. So just keep that in mind before oh, you say I'm out of time. We've got to go. Okay. okay? okay. Anyway, go on. We'll come back carry to on with your okay. point. We'll come back to that. So yeah. one of the one of the things that for me, which I find most compelling, is actually assigning value to things. Right. So you know, I was having a conversation with somebody I think mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago about this, and I was saying that. Yeah. You know, I when I see my child, or yeah. I see you know something, I, yeah. I I know intrinsically that this my child has value, right? And and that's an actual thing. I don't believe it as in a, you know, a something that I've just given it myself. Because for me, that value comes from the transcendent creator who, who ascribes you know, a value to things. In an atheistic universe, you can make purpose for yourself. Right. You know, my purpose. You is, ascribe yeah, values, you but ascribe, they're they're within you. But they're, but they're almost like a self delusion in the sense that they're, it's arbitrary. So every single person. Oh, when could, you say arbitrary, yeah. I mean it's obviously not arbitrary that you give value to your child, is it? I mean, no, evolution we should drive you to you I mean value by, your child, right? I, I, I tell mean, you what arbitrary that should you should be mean. pretty obvious. I tell you what arbitrary I mean by arbitrary. Okay, tell me what you mean. I don't mean arbitrary as in what you do is arbitrary just because you're doing it. I mean, right. arbitrary is, is actually, in, actual, in actual essence, in, a, in, a, in an atheistic universe, nothing has any value at all. Nothing has any value at all. At, it's, actually, it's, it's, at, just, it's just a movement of atoms and Yeah, and yeah, but, 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 but value can be ascribed by a conscious being, sure. right? So you can ascribe value. So then it has value. But that's, no, no. Value doesn't come from just... See, like, I, okay, see, I think that the, the, the problem here is your definition of what value means, right? So I think it means what I ascribe it, or what a conscious being ascribes to it, right? You think what value means is coming from the creator, right? So, of course, we're not going to agree on this point because we're so, defining values in different absolutely. ways. So, for me, what I'm saying right? is that you have... When you when you ascribe value you know, in almost yeah. like an arbitrary sense yeah. to something, because but how, anyone else could ascribe some yeah. else, some other value to that thing. Careful. Whereas, whereas a, for we the creator has given value to human beings, like we're taught, we're taught these things, and they were taught this comes from a transcendent source. We can talk about the transcendence of the source, but that yeah. gives you actual value. So, but let's suppose God values X, whatever it is, right? Um, why should I care? Why should you yeah, I mean, so what? So, that what the, the problem here is is that then, yeah. if the, if there is a creator, yeah, and God does for us allow us to ascribe value in a or no, humanity level, yeah, to things in, not in an arbitrary way, there are other things that come. But along what is that. it about God ascribing it that makes it non-arbitrary? That's what I don't understand. I'll give an example. Yeah. Let, me, let me make this another example. So, there was a point in German history. Yeah. Where they decided that a certain group of people were not valuable as human beings. Right, right, right. Of course. And yeah. they decided to wipe them out. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is arbitrary value taking away value. Arbitrary. Value. Yeah. Now, for us as for us as Muslims, yeah. Yeah. even if we had a government that decided that there are these groups of people who yeah. are not valuable and they and they wanted me to agree or yeah. Abbas to agree or somebody else to agree, yeah. we would not be able to do that. Because why we have a, we set our criteria and our standards from a source that outside, that's outside. Right, but if society. if the source said it was okay, then you would have to agree that it was okay. But it would, we don't accept that that would be the case. But suppose hypothetically it was the case, then logically you would have to conclude that that would be okay to do that. The thing is, I understand what you're saying, but right. there is there is so, a case like that. But that's the problem. You don't think that that would happen. No, no. How, where are you getting that from? So I have... See, I think you're getting it from your own moral intuitions, which is where I'm getting it from. Not, not at all. Therefore, we're not on a different page. So, I have a source that I turn to, which is the Quran. Right. And we, we, we can verify, as, as best I can, we can verify that this is not something that the right. Prophet Muhammad could have yeah. produced himself. Okay. And there are certain characteristics within that text there are, we, can, we can look at, which I believe points to something beyond uh, human capability. Okay. Now, we can discuss what those might be. Right, right, right. So, 
for me, that establishes that we this command that we have comes from a, a, yeah. a being that we would call the creator. Yeah. And then we base our knowledge about what to do and what not to do from that. Now, in those texts, yeah. we're not told to anything like this thing of you know, wiping out a group of people. Yeah, no, 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 but, but um, there are a lot of things you're not told to do that you should do, right? It doesn't say go and get a cup of coffee. But it's not like it didn't say it, so I shouldn't do it. Yeah, but that, that's right? I mean, no, 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 but really, my point is, are, but also it does are, say, as I understand it, or at least in the Hadith, that everything is predetermined by God. Okay. So it seems to me you've got a problem. Because if God allows the Holocaust, which he did, I mean, obviously it happened, right? And God could have stopped it, but he didn't. So either he didn't stop it for a good reason, which means um, there must be some good reason for the Holocaust, which I can't accept, and I'm sure from what I understood you saying, you can't accept either. Or he didn't have a good reason for not stopping it, in which case he can't be this omnipotent, uh, uh, so this omnibenevolent the, sure. being. So, this is the classic, so, so there's uh, a real problem that you have there. All. <laughs> this is the classic, so we move the goalpost slightly, so this is the classic sort of problem of evil. Well, yeah, but the and problem is, you, no, there is if, a, there if, is if, if the Holocaust was wrong and we agree it's wrong, right? We both agree it's wrong, right? And we agree it's an unnecessary yeah. thing, it shouldn't have happened, it was wrong. Right. So, um, given that, right, we know that if there's a God, he allowed it. That's also, we have to accept that, right? So either he allowed it for a good reason, which conflicts with our thinking that the Holocaust is wrong, or he didn't have a good reason, in which case he's not the omnipresent, so, omnipresent God. So this is... Uh, Sorry, I'm repeating myself. Yeah, you have, you have just repeated it. That's fine. Phil, so this is Phil, a, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> this, is really, this, is a, this is sort of the classic problem evil problem. Here. Now, the, the problem with this concept is that you limit your... There's, two, there's a few problems with it, but I'm going to try and delineate them. Okay. So the first thing is you delineate the experience of a human being to this life. That's the first thing that you do. So, and the other thing is you, you miss... You either don't understand or you don't think about the system that's been set up here. You think this is the be-all and end-all of the system. It's not. So, a couple of thought experiments. If you had a system in which there was no... No, no, nothing happened that we would call bad now. So no killing, no murder, no rape, etc., yeah. etc. Et you couldn't even think a bad thought. As soon as the thought came, it would turn into sort of pink puffs and would fly away. If you were to stab somebody, it would turn into a rubber knife. Yeah, and yeah. If you tried to jump off a building, you'd start flying. You know, in that system, yeah. is it? Is there any morality? Is there any morality? Mm, I don't know. I have to think about that. So um, I would say there isn't. Okay. okay. And the reason I would say that is because yeah. there's no action. You are, I'm not able to choose between a right and wrong because there's no choice in that system. My the only thing that you can okay. do is good. Because well, everything else is prevented. Have you, did you ever watch Red Dwarf? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the episode with Prison Planet? Uh, I may have. But it's, uh, oh, let me remind like you. Let me remind you. So in Prison Planet episode, <laughs> <laughs> Rimmer is kept on a, in a prison. Yeah. And he's sentenced to the seven million years in jail or so. I can't remember. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous yeah. amount of time. And um, and the prison has no. They list a ghost to visit them. Yeah. And the prison has no uh, locks on it. He could just walk out. Oh, something. No, I can't remember. But they, 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 the list starts asking about the nature of the prison. He goes, "It's a really weird prison. It's very clever. What happens is any bad thing that you do just gets turned back on you." So, for example, and he says, go on, set fire to the, um, he goes, I'll show you, set fire to my um, uh, blanket or something, um, and to the linen on the bed. So, Lister says, so I the linen on the bed, and his jacket goes on fire. I think I've seen that one. Right, do you remember that yeah, one? I think I've seen so, imagine a setup like that. You still have free choice, right? You still can make choices that are good or bad, but anything that you say you choose as bad just happens to you. Right. So, so, so that, to me, um, would still preserve, um, and you could still have bravery in, in sort of without. You, you might have the appearance of things. So, for example, I went paintballing once, and I got an award for bravery. I, I, I crawled through the grass, <laughs> right, and I stormed the opponent's lag. Now, there wasn't any real risk, right? It's not a real war, right? It's just a game. But you could imagine something like that right like I played Grand Theft Auto and I wouldn't kill any of the 
the civilians because I thought it was wrong, right? So even though there's no real consequences, you could still have, I think, moral so, choices, even so if that's... I think your example is very good, the remote yeah. one. We'll come back to that, and I'll, okay, and I'll, okay. and I'll bring it into my thing. Right, so, okay. First of all, and, and then think of an opposite. So the first thought experiment was a system in which you cannot do anything bad. Right. But I would say that remove the morality from that system, because actually there is no choice. Yeah? Now flip it. A, a, a universe in which only bad things happen. Yeah. Everyone's killing, everyone's murdering, everyone's raping, right. everyone's killing themselves. The, the same question applies. Is there actually any morality in that system? And the, the answer again is would be no. Because again, there's no choice. You can only do bad things. So for me, when I think of, just to bring another very Christianity, yeah. where we're inherently evil and we do evil things, yeah, yeah. just sort of point towards a world like that. Now I don't believe, I don't accept that. So in both of those systems, they are automatically amoral because there's no choice. Morality requires agency, which requires choice. Yeah, but you don't. The problem of evil, I think, doesn't necessarily depend on any notion of morality. You can just focus it. You can just retitle it the problem of suffering. So let's. So we'll come back to suffering. Okay, okay, okay. The, but it's the what answer. I'm saying is the notions of morality and choice aren't a necessary function of the problem. Because let's. So we were talking about the Holocaust. That was the example you gave. But let's give another example: mass extinction of animals. Right? Or the example I gave, I did a debate, and the example I gave actually was not a mass extinction, it was animals caught in what's called a predator trap. I don't know if... Alright, so what a predator trap is, is an animal gets stuck in the mud, right, and it can't move. They starve to death. But it gets much worse than that, because what happens is, other animals go, oh, a meal! So they go, oh, there's a trapped animal there, I got an easy meal. They go in and guess what happens? They get trapped too, right? So this is really horrendous, something they all starve to death, right? And this, we've got examples, there was a, there's, um, there's a predator trap of remains in California, the La Brea Tar Pits. They dug up 4,000 direwolf bones. They all died in this yeah, way. Before, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I think it's a really interesting example, right? Now here, choice I don't see comes into it. Right, we don't know if animals have free will or not. It doesn't matter. They're suffering, so we're gonna... and it's an unnecessary suffering. So we come to that. We'll come to that. And so where's sure. God? So we we'll come to that. Yeah, you've got to give him around five minutes. <laughs> Go for it. it I think I've, had, I've, I've had rimmer. I've had paintballing. Go... I've had... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Paintballing. Go for it. We know more about you. Oh, right. on Facebook page. Right. Go for it. <laughs> so. So the, so the first thing is, that in, a, in, a, in a universe that's set up without any choices, there's no morality. So, so morality is a requirement for judgment. You have the ability to make choices. If you, if you cannot make a choice, you can't be judged. That's basically that simple. The other, the other thing I mentioned right at the beginning was about the timeline of the perception. Okay? So we don't believe as you, we don't believe as Muslims that your perception is limited to just this life. So we've existed before pre-birth and will exist again after. Yes. And actually this life is very short compared to the life after. In fact, we're told that that will go on without end. So, I mean, I'm sure you've had some something nasty happen to you in the past, fallen over, maybe injured yourself. Or, yeah. yeah. So, with time, your perception of that is changed. And yeah. it's not as painful as it was maybe that time. However, whatever that emotional hurt might have been, physical hurt might yeah. have been. So imagine now you put that forward million years, billion years, however many years, that yeah. becomes almost un, un, uh, something you wouldn't remember, immemorable. Okay? And this is really the, what we're talking about. So, you're, to, to, to have a system in which you can be judged, and this is the system that God has set up with really, a system in which you can be judged, yeah. you need to allow free will, and the consequence of that free will amongst human beings is their suffering. Okay? Now, the, I, now, the question you raised is a really good one. What about animals? Animal suffering. So, Yes. I, I don't, I'm not sure if I can say that animals suffer as we suffer because I don't believe that we are the same as animals. I can't. Believe my voice is like So, I, I, my, my view would be because we're told that uh, the one of the hadith of the Prophet peace be upon him is that the, the the goat without the horns will get the opportunity to butt the goat with the horns who butted him in the. In, do you understand? So everything everything is. Reconciled so that's like the compensation. Argument. Compensation. Okay. okay. So even the animals will have some sort of justification or whatever has happened to them. But right. mainly, this earth is set up as human beings. We were set as a vice reason, as a almost like a caretaker for the earth. That's our main role. So even though human beings are destroying the earth. Well, they are, yeah. Earth. We're not doing the right thing. Our, our role was actually here. And we're going to be accountable for that. I don't believe that we're not accounted for okay. what we're doing for the earth. Okay. So, 
So, so three points. So the perception. So so there's, there's, the, there's a long time. long time. There's Second animals difference. are different to us. Yeah. And there's and to, what was the to allow a system in which there's free will. Free will. Free will. All right. So let me try and go through each one of those three points. Let's start with animals are different to us. We're not sure if they suffer. I think the evidence that they suffer is overwhelming. So let me try and explain what that evidence is. So I'll, I'll give you um, a couple of things. Right. First off, we know that if we trigger um, certain uh, subcortical regions of the brain we get the same emotions in humans and animals. So for example, there are, there, there are experiments done by Yak Panskep, or at least described in Yak Panskep's book, um, Effective Neuroscience, where you, you stimulate these regions and you get fear response in a human, and they say, oh, I've just suddenly felt afraid, I don't know why, right? Um, you can do exactly the same in an animal, and they, they show a fear response, right? You, could, you can do these with different circuits in the brain. I'm not saying all emotions are, are localized, but some, some are. Right, and um, what they find is for, for negative emotions like fear, that if you give the animal the control over the emotion, they will switch it off. So things that we generally associate with negative emotions, they switch them off. Whereas positive ones, not only do they switch them on if you give them control, they'll they'll keep pushing a button until you know like they become like an addict. Right. Second experiment. This was an experiment done with fish by Lynn Snedden. What they did was they gave um, fish. Um, a, a noxious stimuli like a bee sting put it on their lips and first thing they noticed was when they did this the, the fish started to, to rub its lip right pretty similar to what we do but that's that's not good enough right we want controls we want to, we want to see subjective experience what they did was very clever was they observed fish uh, preferences in their tank right so, so a fish will, will if you give it at the tank variety like some dark lighting or some toys and structures, they, they, they will prefer to hang out in certain locations. When they gave the fish, um, <coughs> and it was, so they observed, okay, so here's a preferred location, here's a dispreferred location, they don't like that, maybe it's dark or something like that. They don't like to hang out here, right? If, however, you, you give them a noxious stimuli and you put an analgesic, in that area, they switch their preferences, right? And they then go to the one they don't prefer. Another piece of evidence is they have endogenous opioids in them. So you know, you're a doctor, so you know about endogenous opioids. It, it, it's very strange what, what the function of this system could be. Endogenous, for those who are watching, endogenous opioids are basically um, painkillers that your body secretes, right? And why would the body do that? Well, maybe you're being chased by a tiger and you, you hurt your toe. The, the, the endogenous opioids will actually temporarily suppress the pain so that you can escape, right, the predator. So, so you've got these endogenous opioid systems, so you've got these behaviors where they change preferences. So I think the evidence that they experience pain in a similar way, I'm not gonna say same, because you know that human beings don't all feel the pain in the same way. Some people have very high tolerance of pain, some very low tolerance of pain. Another very powerful piece of evidence that is common in humans and animals is if you take out the higher cortical structures what well, we have a patient called patient R who had a lot of his higher cortical structures destroyed by herpes encephalitis he is hypopathic to pain so so he 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 has a very low tolerance to pain in fact they tried to study pain in MRI and you know that you have to keep still in an, for an MRI and he couldn't keep still well, the way they test pain it's not like they torture or anything they um they ask you to put your hand in an ice cold bucket and see how long it takes you to take it out. He, he couldn't keep still when he put his hand in the bucket and he was like, no, no. Uh, so, so, so the fact that this patient with his, sub with his sorry, cortical structures taken out, uh, all of these things I think speaks very strongly that humans and animals are similar in the pain system. So they've evolved because they're very... Can we speak about that before you move on? I know you've got another two points to make. Yeah, okay, don't worry. You, you, you respond, you respond. that's fine. So, sorry, if you look at all of these... Where is this going with the loss of pain? What's the point? Um, so, uh, it's, a long it's a long conversation. Sorry. So, yeah. So the watch the video and then you'll see. Animals and humans have very different nervous systems anyway. Well, watch the video and you'll see. They're very okay. different nervous systems. Okay. Okay. So let, the, let us. Start. So the, if you look at all of these studies. Yeah.